All right, this lesson is called the sign law part two, lesson two. In part two, lesson one, we looked at how to defend the ambiguous case, or how to determine when there are zero, one, or two unique triangles given some certain measurements. Um, but we didn't go beyond that. What we're doing in this lesson is just going over one practical example where you're actually asked not only to determine how many triangles there are using the ambiguous case, but what are the measurements or to solve those triangles. So getting into practical calculations of solving those triangles. So uh, here's, here we go. So solving when there are two unique triangles, acute and obtuse. So in triangle ABC, angle C is 40 degrees, C is 30 centimeters, and side A is 42 centimeters. It says solve the triangle to the nearest whole unit. So um, we were told that in the previous unit, that or previous section, that to check the ambiguous case, we have to be given some angle, its opposite side, and another side. So in this particular case, we do have an angle, its opposite side, and some other side. So we need to check the ambiguous case to see if there's zero, one, or two unique triangles. So let's do that really quickly. Uh, the height of this, and it's compared to the height of the triangle. The height of this triangle is going to be 42 times the sine of 40. You can look at the previous lesson for the justification for that, or it comes from primary trig ratios. Uh, so if I do that, 42 times the sine of 40, I get roughly 27. So the height of this triangle is 27 centimeters. So what we need to do now is determine how many unique triangles there's going to be. So 30 is longer. So 30 is roughly this long. Okay. So what we're going to find is there actually going to be two triangles because 30 is longer than the height. So you'd have a triangle that looks like this, but it's also shorter than 42. So you'd also have a triangle that looks something like this. Or in other words, if you need to see a specific picture, uh, let me show it to you. Here are the two unique triangles. And what we need to do so you'll see that one case is where the 30 centimeter arm comes out like this, and the other case is like this, okay, it comes in like this. So what we need to do now is solve for both triangles, and that has uh, some interesting applications, especially when we get to the second triangle. So using the knowledge that we know about the sine law, solving the triangle means solving for all the unknown sides and angles. So what I'm going to do is use the sine law, uh, first of all, to solve for angle A. Okay, so what we have at this point in time is sine of angle A over 42 is equivalent up to uh, sine of 40 over 30. Okay, um, the first step of algebra, we multiply both sides by 42. And being careful on my calculator, I will calculate that, uh, what I've put a box around there. So the sine of A is equivalent to, and again, I'll use multiple steps on my calculator. I'm going to do sine 40 in brackets divided by 30 hit equals, and now times it by the 42 that I brought over from the other side. So it's 0.8999026, etc., etc. So it's uh, 0.8999026. Don't round that number. So angle A is going to be the sign inverse of that answer of the 0 0.899, etc. So if I take the sign inverse of that, so sign inverse of my previous answer, what I'm going to get is 64 degrees. So angle A is 64 degrees. So here's 64 degrees. Uh, the next angle we can solve for is angle B. So if I solve for angle B, angles in a triangle equal 180. So it would just be 180 minus 40 minus 64. And that's equivalent to 76 degrees. So this angle B here is 76 degrees. And finally, Using the sine law again, I'm going to use, so this is side B here that we need to solve for. Uh, I'm going to use the sine law with the blues, the pair of blues, and the pair of greens because those weren't rounded, whereas this was a rounded answer. So if I set up the sine law for that, it would be B over sine 76 is equivalent to 30 over sine 40. And if we multiply both sides by sine 76, Again, being careful, uh, I'm going to get that B, or side B, is equivalent to, and I'm going to do this in multiple steps, 30 divided by sine 40, it equals, there's that proportion, now times it by sine 76. And always make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Um, so I get roughly 45. So B is roughly 45 centimeters. I've solved that triangle. Here's the interesting thing. To solve for triangle 2, my first step would be to use the sine law to solve for angle A, which is exactly the same as what I did in triangle 1. 
So how can I expect a different result by doing the same thing? And I won't get a different result, but let me just kind of show you. I would set it up like this. It would be sine A over 42 is equivalent to sine 40 over 30. That's exactly the same as this original proportion. So what you would expect is that you get the exact same answer is that A is 64, which is true. Okay. However, does A look like 64 degrees? No, A is obtuse. So what we need to understand, and this is from uh, some of the section 2.2 lessons that we did, is that this 64 degrees for the obtuse angle A is actually the reference angle. And why we know that is because sine, sine ratio is positive not only in the acute quadrant, in quadrant 1, but it's also positive in quadrant 2, which is between 90 and 180. So this is actually, for this particular triangle, my reference angle. So angle A in this case, the quadrant 2 angle that represents this, would be 180 minus 64, which is 116 degrees. So that is what we need to be careful about. So this is 116 degrees, and now we can solve the rest pretty quickly. Uh, angle B is going to be 180 minus 40 minus 116, and that's going to be 24 degrees, which makes more sense. And finally, to solve for side B, uh, what I would do is do uh, B over sine 24 is equivalent to 30 over sine 40. So using, again, uh, the sine law to do that. So multiply both sides by sine 24. And B is equivalent to this box part here, so I'll do it in one step. Uh, or multiple steps, 30 divided by sine 40, hit equals, and times up by sine 24. And I get an estimated length of 19, so that's roughly 19. Uh, B is 19 centimeters. And I've solved both triangles. So important thing is realizing uh, not only how many triangles will there be, but am I asked to solve for those triangles? And if that's the case, using the acute angle, for the first one you find, and the obtuse. There's your two triangles.